Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is this the best a man can get? Where have we heard that slogan of late? Gillette, right? Maker of men's razors. They're using that slogan in a new advertising campaign, and they're also using their influence to weigh in on the Me Too social movement. Hmm. Didn't we just hear how Nike had done something like that a little while ago? Is this just another one of those calculated business moves that's aimed at increasing profits, market share, or both? Well, I guess we'll find out then, right? Soon enough. But I wonder, I wonder if words to this effect may have been uttered by Mary, the mother of Jesus, during the wedding at Canaan. And how could that be so? Well, the wine was out, as we remember from John's Gospel. The party was about to end. A major social mishap was about to unfold. The new bride and groom, they were about to start their life as husband and wife on some really unfavorable social footing. That is, unless Jesus intervened. You know, I get the sense, though, that Jesus may not have been so keen on intervening at this moment. Yeah, sure, Mary wanted him to do something. She wanted him to help, but Jesus didn't seem to want to. Woman, my time has not yet come, is basically what Jesus said. This is none of our business. Now I wonder what kind of a look Mary may have given Jesus, her son, at this time. I wonder. Well, the text doesn't say that she said anything else to Jesus. At least John didn't document it. But if she had said something else to Jesus, what could she have said? Could she have said something like, Jesus? Is this the best that you can do? What kind of a man are you? Are you pulling a Pontius Pilate here, washing your hands of this situation? Hmm? That doesn't sound very much like you. You know, clearly Mary, Mary was using her influence with Jesus, her son, to get his attention and then to bring out the best in him, to, to get him to act, to save the day for two people who were just getting started in their married life together. Indeed, let the good times roll. So then, when it comes to us, dear friends in faith, how are we using our influence in situations for good? For good. Are we doing all that we can to save the day when we see a proverbial train wreck unfolding in front of our eyes in slow motion? Well, perhaps there are going to be those situations where the best thing we can do is to run for cover. But I sense that there are certainly those situations, those times when, when we can say or do something that can make all of the difference in the world for setting up a favorable outcome. I mean, let's face it, moms. You have as much influence on your children as anyone in the whole world. No one has as much influence on a child as his or her mother, no matter how old the child happens to be. Are you using your positions of power and influence to do the maximum good? I mean, that goes for fathers and other family members as well. Are we doing what we can and all that we can to possibly change a potential tragedy or at least a large disappointment into an outcome that can be celebrated? Indeed, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I sense that we all have more influence in social situations than, than we may always recognize or admit. Are we doing what we can? Are we doing the best with the power that we have to make things right? You know, Mary's influence led to Jesus' first public miracle. It was a powerful act. It says at the end of the text that Jesus' disciples, his early followers, believed in him as a result of what they had witnessed. It happened at a wedding. It had all the symbolic power of reminding the whole world that God's relationship of love with us and with all of his people is like a wedding celebration. 
one of abundant life and abundant love. Now, while none of us that I know can turn water into wine in the blink of an eye like Jesus can, that miracle of Jesus did need some help. First of all, it needed Mary to intervene, to, to get Jesus' attention, and then it needed the servants to, to draw all that water. I mean, that was no small effort to, to fill six large stone jugs with between 20 and 30 gallons of water. You know, that's potentially 180 gallons, folks. Can you imagine how much that must have weighed? Siri says that it's about 100, or about 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds! Wow! Heavy indeed. And then when Jesus would feed the multitudes with, with the loaves and the fish, it was once again his disciples, his followers, that were charged with distributing the food and then picking up everything that was left when the miracle was finished. And at the end of John's Gospel, in chapter 21, when there was that great catch of 153 variety of fish, once again, it was the followers of Jesus who needed to break their backs in order to pull that big catch into the boat. Folks, Jesus makes miracles happen. This is most certainly true. But we and all of his followers have an active role to play in these miracles as well. So then, people of God, let's not forget Let's not forget that Jesus is truly the real deal. He's the best that any of us can get. But let's also look to continue and increase our influence in situations that are both public and private, so that there is little to no doubt from our neighbors about who is Lord of our lives. Jesus is. We can rewind. I'm John Hall.